as you can see, I'll float, Mark is floating, and so it really takes a lot of effort to learn how to control that. When I set things down on the ground, you can let it go and it sits there. And so we think just like at home, you have your lights on the ceiling, so that is up. But then you can do this, like Randy's doing right now. It looks like he, for him, that he's standing up. So there's really no sense of direction other than maybe the writing on the walls and the lights that we have. Really neat when you're working, you can get in all different kinds of spots and it all seems to work fine so it's a it's a great place to live and work when you're working you can get in all different kinds of spots and it all seems to work fine is this a hoax are you really in space still i don't know we're gonna have to do something for you yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, Oh, yeah, I can do that. Watch Come this. On. <laughs> I want to do it. I know. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Watch Come this. Thanks very much. I know we've got uh, limited time. You've got lots to do up there, but I guess you want that special. Lots to do up there, but I guess you want that special. Lots to do up there, but I guess you want that special. Lots to do up there. Lots to do up there. What's the most fun for you? I mean, is that it? Is weightlessness it? If you, somebody asks you what's the most fun? You know, I think the, the most fun thing for me, aside from uh, being able just to do something like that whenever you feel like it, is uh, being able to share, share this experience. And so I try and keep in touch with friends and family through email and um, using the phone. You know, I think the, the most fun thing for me you know, I think the, the most fun thing for me... in a certain way to have it and actually the screen directions flopped right yes yeah it's on wires but it's all upside down and then um, and then uh, and then the camera does a sort of uh, rotational uh, move that makes uh, everything else look <laughs> it's sort of we found like the you know even li li little tricks like flopping images or things like that or putting yeah. a camera upside down or things like that could actually could do a ton because really help sell it because you the intent actually is to sort of confuse the viewer enough in terms of directionality because that's sort of what space does uh, there they actually aren't on any wires at all they're just sort of just moving yeah, kind yeah. of acting like that but the set has been uh, clocked right. and, and turned around right so that it's again you know you're disoriented you, you, you get away with it for just that brief scene um, plus with an object floating by you know like the the, the film like canisters that, and things yeah, you know yeah. just the uh, camera back things like that can hopefully do just enough to help sell it yeah The obvious question is, okay, you've been a senior CIA officer, and uh, do you believe this? Yes, I believe this. Uh, however, let me clarify that 90% of the people in CIA are good people trapped in a bad system, and there are at least seven CIAs, okay? 
So CIA is not a monolithic organization. Also, when we, against the orders of President Truman, when Alan Dulles brought in all the Nazi scientists and so forth, they went to two places. They went to CIA and they went to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which in our world we call it not a space agency. <laughs> and as Kathy O'Brien has said so clearly, that's where the bulk of the mind control has been done. So just to, to mention the seven CIAs as a partial and very brief answer to your question. When Alan Dulles brought in all the Nazi scientists and so forth, they went to two places. They went to CIA and they went to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which in our world we call it not a space agency. I think that's a cultural thing and also just the way uh, their technology is and the way their program is. Hi, Sarah again. I would like to ask, when you've looked out of the cupola, what is the most remarkable thing you've ever seen? That's another tough one. I mean, there's many beautiful and remarkable things to see when you look out the cupola. I guess so far for me, uh, I like the the, uh, the waters, the shallow waters in the Caribbean or the atolls in the south uh, east of Pacific are just beautiful. This blue, this aqua that comes up against the dark blue of the other part of the ocean and the islands is just uh, magnificent. It's just so beautiful for me. Hey, this is Dave from Marketing again. What is the most challenging thing about wearing a spacesuit, and what improvements would you like to see in future spacesuits? Hey, Dave. Uh, excuse me. in the Caribbean or the atolls in the south uh, east of Pacific are just beautiful. This blue, this aqua that comes up against the dark blue of the other part of the ocean. In the Caribbean or the atolls in the south uh, east of Pacific are just beautiful. This blue, this aqua that comes up against the dark blue of the other part of the ocean. In the Caribbean or the atolls in the south uh, east of Pacific are just beautiful. This blue, this aqua that comes up against the dark blue of the other part of the ocean. The atolls in the south uh, east of Pacific are just beautiful. This blue, this aqua that comes up against the dark blue. Google Plus Hangout, International Space Station, we have you loud and clear aboard. We have our way, own way of hanging out up here and watch my buddies hang out. We're ready to hang out with you guys. Welcome aboard. Awesome. We have a lot of questions for you guys today, so let's start the first one from YouTube. And what comes after the International Space Station once its mission is over? How do we ensure the presence of humans in space? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond. 
and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not a, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. To me, a frontier is a place where your normal intuition no longer applies. The answers are not in the back of the book, and you're going to have to figure things out for yourself. And this makes an environment that's rich in discovery. It makes an environment where the things you learn are going to tickle your imagination and enrich your mind. And then you share them with everybody on earth. And, and that is the value of going into these frontiers. And one of, another feature of a frontier is that once you start answering questions, you will find that the very questions you asked to begin with were not the right questions that needed to be asked in the first place. <laughs> and this character is what's going to keep human beings from becoming a fossil layer eroding out from some hillside on planet Earth. And we won't become dinosaurs. After all, if the dinosaurs explored the, the space, if they colonized other planets, they would still be alive today. <laughs> the answers are not in the back of the book, and you're going to have to figure things out for yourself. And so what do you do to wet your toothbrush and where do you spit afterwards? Those are the big questions. So uh, first we just fill up a water bag with water. And this is what we're going to put on our toothpaste. So let me get a ball of water here. There's a nice ball of water. Floating on the end. Shut off the straw. Very carefully. Okay, and get my toothbrush wet. Toothbrushes soak up water nicely. So now I have a nice wet toothbrush. Good. So I'm partway there. Got my toothbrush wet. Now I just need to put some toothpaste on it, on it and uh, get cleaning my teeth. So I'm going to suck the water off it because where else would it go? Nice wet toothbrush. Grab some toothpaste. We just use standard toothpaste in space. Squeeze a little on. Not too much because you're going to have to clean it up later. Okay, so there's my toothpaste on my toothbrush. It's wet. It's ready to go. It's loaded. Brush my teeth just like normal. Get them all. Especially the ones in the back. You should brush your teeth for about as long as you can sing happy birthday. That should be long enough. Okay. You should brush your teeth for about as long as you can sing happy birthday. That should be long enough. Okay, so now what I'm going to do. I've got a mouthful of toothpaste stuff. i got a dirty toothbrush. So what I do is I just swallow the toothpaste. It's edible. Won't kill you. And what else am I going to do? Put it in a rag and have a dirty rag? Doesn't make any sense. So, uh, in space, 
You don't swallow your toothpaste. It leaves my toothbrush just a little bit dirty, so I need to find where my water went and rinse it out. Fortunately, things are weightless, so things don't go too far. So here's my water again. So now I'll uh, get a little water in my mouth. Rinse out my toothbrush. So I have a relatively clean, slightly damp toothbrush to put back in my toothbrush case. Uh, the toothpaste is hung back on the wall. We communally share one toothpaste tube, just like living in a dormitory. And I still have good water to drink. And uh, it doesn't go up your nose. There's nothing to push it up your nose. It just floats. So, uh, so it works fine. That's how you brush your teeth in space. The rocket equation, it's a beautiful thing. Your faith. No astronaut launches for space with their fingers crossed. That's not how we deal with risk. You disgust me. How can you live with yourself? What I learned from 21 years as an astronaut is that Your faith. the more you know, the less you fear. You sit on a throne of lies. The reason I wanted to do this master class is to share the hidden depths of purpose that are behind space exploration. You're a fake. I'm a fake? Yes. When the clock hits zero, start focusing in, thinking of nothing else but the moment that you're in. Study every system on a spaceship and then boil it down to one breath. You have to push your lungs forward through the drag of the atmosphere. Crushed into your chair. The reason is one half rho v squared s. 16 times the speed of sound as you accelerate harder and harder. That light blue Florida sky starts to get darker and darker. And then suddenly, you're weightless. <laughs> Turn the handle and open the hatch. You pull yourself out into the universe. And now suddenly, when you move your knees, you can feel the searing heat of the sun on one side and the incredibly cold emptiness of space on the other. When you're no longer Earthlings, how do you navigate? You can use the stars. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface. I don't remember seeing any. You start to unavoidably wonder, are we alone in the universe or not? Our technology is just good enough now that some of you taking this master class are going to fly in space. <laughs> you serious? We're never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. And we could not see stars. really are billions and billions of stars, and you can see them. I see There's so many stars and planets. I don't remember seeing any. You can see the stars. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, pretty much all the time, you can see yeah. the stars. It's not a black cool void. Black, but there's all kinds of focus there's on all the, There's all the stars there. The cool thing is that you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You right. can see moons. You, you see the, ga the gas, uh, the Magellan clouds. Of yeah, the yeah, you see galaxy. the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah, I just wanted the well, Magellan clouds. there's a large clouds, one and a small one. which most of you have already seen. 
and with the intent of, of pointing out some of the things that we observed on the, the spot which may not be obvious to to those of you who are who are uh, looking at them here from the sur surface of earth the flight as you know started promptly and i think that was characteristic of of all the events of the flight the Saturn gave us one magnificent ride. Both into Earth orbit and on a trajectory to the moon. And on a trajectory to the moon. To the moon. The moon. The moon. In addition, we also accomplished a spacewalk for <laughs> uh, getting a, a repair done on an external MDM. Um, that MDM uh, failed and we had it repaired within three days. Another amazing event by our teams. In addition, uh, Expedition 51, uh, has, uh, Tomah was able to grapple the Cygnus vehicle and we unloaded thousands of pounds of cargo and reloaded it with trash uh, during the time frame. And we have accomplished an incredible amount of scientific research during the time of Expedition 51, including my favorite, the osteomics investigation, the European uh, grip and grasp in Mari's experiments, um, the U.S.-Russian uh, fluid shifts investigation, uh, and we've launched 34 different satellites or from uh, the NanoRex launchers. So it's been an incredible invest, uh, time frame for our scientific investigations as well. We are, of course, going to miss Alig and Toma. They are exceptional astronauts. Uh, they are exceptional astronauts uh, in every sense of the word. But mostly, we're going to miss their sense of humor and camaraderie.